Okay, we are live. Welcome to another edition of Carnivore Mastermind Live. I have with me this evening an excellent guest uh, panel here, and we're going to be discussing eating out on carnivore, whether that be going out to restaurants, traveling, road trips, going to work, you know, bringing your lunch to work, doing this outside of the comfort zone of our own kitchens, how to deal with that, how to um, prepare things that are um, going to keep you on track and some some tips from our panel. And then we've also got um, some input from our poll of the week this week, um, which was also really good. Um, just some ideas about how to you know make this um, sustainable in your life, because I think it's one thing to be able to cook at home all the time and, and stick to your way of eating. But then when we get out into these other situations, especially if you're newer, uh, a newer carnivore or, you know, you've had trouble sticking to it in the past. These are some of the situations that can be the most difficult, I think. I know they have been for me in the past. And so I think um, this is a good hopefully it will be a helpful conversation and provide some good tips for everybody out there. So um, before we kind of go around the panel this evening. I'll bring up the poll for this week and just kind of go over the results here. So I asked you guys, let's see here, how often do you eat out at restaurants or other people's homes and how does that go for you? And the really overwhelming majority, 69% said rarely, really for special occasions only. And then that was followed up by uh, 19% said never, I always eat at home. And then we had 9% say often, I travel or I just enjoy it. And 3% said all the time, the neighborhood steakhouse knows, be my, knows me by name. So um, <laughs> sounds like, you know, at least from the 469 votes we got this week, uh, it's, it's a rare occasion. But still, I think it's good to discuss this because even those rare, occasion, uh, rare, rare occasions can be stumbling blocks sometimes if we're not careful. And so um, we got some a variety of comments here this week too. So definitely something to check out if you haven't already. Um, and so, yeah, I think we'll, I usually go clockwise, I think around here. So we'll start with Robin. And I think, you know, if you, if we want to just, um, you want to introduce your channel and yourself first and then in case you know someone's tuning in for the first time or hasn't met you yet and then give us your thoughts about eating out and how you handle that as a carnivore well hello everybody good evening my name is robin heron and i am your carnivorous grandma um my channel is at carnivorous grandma g-r-a-m-a so a lot of people get confused by that but that's what my grandkids call me so i just cut out the grand <laughs> just said grandma. <laughs> so um, for me, um, I was one of the ones, one of that 3% that said that I eat out a lot. Um, now, the neighborhood steakhouse doesn't necessarily know my name, but, <laughs> but I go there a lot. So I do end up eating out quite a lot. Um, I've learned to order a la carte. Um, and so I just recently did a video about this at Olive Garden about how to order your food, um, how to order just meat, and no pasta. When I was on keto, I did the same thing. I would order my food with um, like, I would order like a chicken Alfredo or something, but I would order it over broccoli when I was on keto. So just learning how to customize your food um, to be what you, want, what you want it to be. Now, um, when I go to other people's houses, I always bring a dish because um, a lot of times they will, you know, they'll have meats that have sauces on it or they'll have like something that's breaded or stuff like that. So I always, I usually bring steak bites because it's real easy to cook and everybody loves them. And so whenever I bring that, the people just go crazy over it. They always eat it all up. So um, steak bites is super easy. Um, when I think about traveling, which I do fairly often. I do travel for work sometimes. Um, same thing, you know, I will, I, I like to stay in a hotel that has a kitchen uh, so that I can cook my own food and I'll go shop and then I'll cook my own food in the hotel um, so that I don't have to um, go out. Uh, but if I do end up going out, I just, I mean, I just order all the meats. I order the meats and that's what I eat. 
So um, for me, I, you know, it's it's often it's just me and my husband. I don't have any little kids at home. Sometimes I have my grandkids here, but um, it's easy for us to go out once or twice a week uh, to eat. So that's pretty much how I'm handling it these days. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, those are good tips. I, I do try the a la carte thing. A lot of places I find that does work. Um, some people look at me like a deer in the headlights, like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> like just a burger patty, you know, yeah. with nothing else yeah. or, um, so it kind of depends, but, um, but yeah, I find that that works well for me as well. A lot of the time. So, all right, scoot over to Larry. You're on mute, Larry. You're muted. My bad. This is Larry Allhands from uh, Austin, Texas. How y'all doing? I'm the carnivore soldier. So as we say in Austin, all right, all right, all right. And if you haven't seen uh, Matthew McConaughey's movie, uh, you need to check it out. And he's he, where he says that. It's great. But um, Days Confused, I think it was called. Uh, so that's where I get that from, the all right, all right, all right. But uh, that's how I start my videos usually. So dining out, I don't dine out very much. But when I'm running errands and I, if I get hungry and I don't think a drink's going to do it because I'll stop, sometimes just get a drink, then uh, a lot of times I'll just get like burger patties. And I go to my or, or in Texas, you can also go to barbecue because there's barbecue in every corner here. So if I'm going to get burger patties, I'll definitely go to like I know it's, you know, just like a drive through like in and out or or even um, Wendy's because I know they have good quality burger patties relatively good you know for fast food and then um but if i'm in a restaurant sometimes i order burger patty as well because that's the low-hanging fruit it's so easy and uh you know the only thing is you've got to make sure that when you order and, and usually burger patties aren't fried with other fats which is good uh like steaks they may fry with a a, a grill spray or with a, a, some kind of oil and it's typically a vegetable oil and i don't want that in my diet so i will ask it for with you know be fried on butter or lard and i have a card i made up and there'll be a link in this video i think nia put it in there <clears throat> it's a uh, food allergy card that that basically says hey i'm allergic to all vegetable oils and these are good fats that you can fry with and don't use these ones so it just makes my makes my uh discussion point really easy you just hand that to the uh, waiter and they could take it to the chef you know they're just they're like business cards so it's really easy but um so when I do go out, uh, barbecue is like, if I'm going to go out, it'll be barbecue a lot of times. I'll just, Cause it, you know, you can get like fatty cuts. You can order what's called uh, extra moist brisket here, which means it's, it's got lots of fat in it. I mean, literally like half the meat is fat. And when you order it extra moist, it is fantastic. Uh, and if you order, you know, and usually in most barbecue places here, it's just smoke and salt and maybe some pepper. Uh, they don't, they, if, if it's good barbecue, they won't do much else. And if it's good barbecue, you won't need sauce in Texas. Uh, barbecue sauce is kind of an abomination from the barbecue point of view. I think, uh, if, if you have bad barbecue, you need sauce, right? So if you have good barbecue, the meat just tastes great the way it is. So I will usually like take my son out and we'll go to get some barbecue. And here in Texas, barbecue is everywhere, even at our grocery store. So we'll, one of our favorite barbecue places is our grocery store, and our second favorite one is our gas station. So I mean, <laughs> that's the way we we roll here in Texas. So it's super easy to pick up gas and barbecue at the same time, or go get groceries and barbecue. And that's a good tip too. Like if you're gonna go grocery shopping, and you eat barbecue first, then go to the grocery store. You're not gonna, you're not even gonna be hungry. You don't even look at other stuff. You're just here to pick up what's on your list. And uh, so going out to other people's houses, uh, I would say. You know, I I eat before I go, so I'm not very hungry when I get there. And um, if if I was going to bring something, it would probably be like deviled eggs, because I know everyone likes them, and I can make them carnivore with my carnivore mayonnaise, and um, and I like them, so I could I could down a bunch of those, and they're super healthy. So that's probably what I would do. And I definitely just drink water when I'm out. You know, so yeah, going out and eating, I don't do it much because it's so dang expensive. And it never tastes nearly as good as what I make at home. So that's just me, though. But that's that's all I got. Um, uh, like I said, that that uh, link to that card should be in the video. And I'll, I'll yeah, she put it in the video description. I'll put it in the chat too, just so anyone wants to take a look at it. Can 
you can download it for free. What kind of grocery stores are you getting barbecue at? I never see H -E that in Dallas. I don't know if they have H-E-B in Dallas. No, we don't. Have we have um, yeah. Central Market, which I think is that's H -E -B owned by H-E-B. Yeah, that's the H-E-B version of Whole Foods. That's their upscale. Yeah, but I don't think they have barbecue there. Store. Yeah. Yeah, I've only been there a couple of times. It's a little, that one's a little bit of a drive from where I am. So <laughs> Listen, I don't know they're often, -E but I didn't see any there. Our H -E -B has a barbecue and a bar. The bar's upstairs open till nine o'clock at night. So they have like happy hour and stuff. So you can like go drinking and then go grocery yeah, you shopping. just live there. Oh, Texas is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's an amazing <laughs> place to live. It is. I mm, love Texas. Okay. Well, whenever I'm down there, I'll have to go to H-E-B. You have to go to H-E-B. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Uh, we'll go down to Miss Ellie. Hello, everyone. I'm Ellie from Nourishment Redacted. I'm... I make videos about my experience on the keto and carnivore diets. Um, my heaviest weight used to be 240 pounds. I'm now in the 170s. Um, I used to be depressed and I had horrible panic attacks and I had like horrible rosacea and I found so much healing and more, but I've had, I've found so much healing on these diets. And so how do I stay carnivore while eating out? And the truth is, is that, I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to, not that I'm eating off plan, but I'm trying to avoid it because I feel like coming from a background where I, I had a lot of happy memories in restaurants and I kind of seeked, I kind of seeked it out. I remember back when my husband and I, we first started dating, that was all we ever did was, oh, let's check out this restaurant or um, let's go to this fast food place. And that was one of the first things that I actually, on my health journey that I cut out was eating fast food because I, you know, my husband has ulcerative colitis and it's really like, you know, his colon's very damaged. Let's just say it how it is. And so we just want to eliminate, eliminate as much um, pain that he might have. So that was one of the first things on the chopping block was like gone. Um, I used to eat out in the beginning. So I'm coming up to about a year in May on the carnivore. And I would say that I did eat out in the beginning, you know, like Texas Roadhouse and you just get steak and some shrimp or something like that. I never felt good just like oh, telling them like, oh, can I have this, but then take this out and take this out, take this out. I know they're willing to do it as long as you're polite and you chip well and you're willing to like work with each other. But I personally, I'm, I'm so shy and reserved. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm so shy and reserved that I just like feel like I can't do that yet. So I usually abstain. Um, I, you know, we are trying to pursue carnivore as a family, um, for the most part. And, but the truth is, is I let my kids eat when we go out. I let them eat whatever they want, particularly my daughter who is like three and a half and my son is one and a half. I just, I kind of let them eat whatever they want. And then when we're back home, we cook what mama makes and it's carnivore. And, um, so yeah, I'm probably, I thought I was going to be the minority in the, uh, the poll, which was like that. I never eat out. But uh, that was quite surprising to me. I thought I was gonna be like, nope, you got to stay home. But I do recognize that there are times when you're not going to have food. And so that's why when I know that we're going to be going out, I have to be preemptive, I have to think ahead. And some simple things is just like, you know, hashtag purse bacon and, <laughs> you know, having cheat cuts of cheese. And I bring some berries for the kids and making some like, you know, cold cuts. I mean, they're not the best ingredients, but they're in a pinch. I'll go up to the deli counter and ask for, you know, X, Y, and Z and just make little like roll ups with those. And, um, but yeah, like the most part, I, I try to avoid the restaurants because of just money honestly, we're, we're on a pretty, um, tight budget. I think almost everyone is at this point, let's be honest. But, um, I am glad that I don't put emphasis on the food anymore, where it's like, oh, if I want to have a good time or I want to connect with friends, I need to go to a restaurant to do that. Instead, you know, I can invite them into my home. We can have a meal here or not even have a meal at all if they're not hungry. 
and we can focus on what I think is, I think what a lot of people seek is to have a venue where you can open up with your friends. Like some people, uh, you know, they can't open up with having a beer in their hand or like ordering some food. It, I feel like it kind of like creates this like comfort barrier. And I think what we should strive to do is you know, create those environments in our own home if we can, or if we are to go out, you know, don't worry so much about the food, but worry about the connection. So that's, that's my two cents. <laughs> that's great. I relate to so much of that because I, and when it, when it gets to my turn, I'll kind of comment more, but, um, you know, I, I worked in restaurants for almost, well, what was it? Age 20 to, Yeah. 12 years, 13 years. Um, and so that was my job was to create this experience for people, you know, as a server, as a bartender. And so, you know, alcohol and food and ambiance and all those things, um, like that was so ingrained in my head, you know, of like, this is what it's about. And this is how people connect. And this is how you can, you know, have social socializing and all this kind of stuff. And my whole whole world was based around that all my friends and all my, you know, after work activities involved that to some degree. And so letting go of all that, it really, you really do have to kind of relearn how to make friends and have different, you know, different activities that don't always revolve around food. Um, or it can be, it can be hard doing it this, you know, eating this way. So, um, thank you. Uh, Cammie, you're next. Hi, my name is Cammie. My channel is last day of normal. And I've kind of just recently adopted more of a canning kind of perspective. Like I'm canning a lot right now. So if you want to see how to preserve, uh, your meat long-term come to my channel, um, so I've been carnivore for just over a year. I've lost 50 pounds. I was up at 240, just like Ellie. Um, I'm only 5'3", so I was like bowling ball shaped. And <laughs> But I'm not where I want to be yet. And I'm going lion right now. And so it, the, the scale is starting to move again. And for me, with autoimmune conditions, I have to be really, really strict in order to continue healing. So you know, I was just kind of parking it for a while, just resting my body and healing. And now, now we're going to hopefully um, continue on that healing process. So eating out last year in June and July, me and my daughter went on a five week RV trip. So we, I pulled it just me and my 10 year old at the time RV. And so I learned a lot and I, I, the whole time I did not eat one bite of anything that was not meat. It was not, I, everything I ate was carnivore and we were with family. We were eating out all the time. We were eating at their houses and it just was not a temptation for me because I had a goal. I wanted to get better. I wanted to feel better and I wanted to keep losing weight. I was just completely driven. There's also a part of me that likes to be different than other people and to feel a little bit kind of special and superior, perhaps. So I didn't mind that part either of them kind of being like rolling their eyes. That doesn't bother me when people get irritated about that. I just think it's funny. So I had no problem. We I would just eat before we went out and I just made sure that I had meat with me all the time. And even hot dogs are better than eating out at a restaurant. So if you're going to a barbecue, bring a pack of hot dogs because then other people can share them and you can control what kind of hot dog you're eating. I get the either like the kosher or the Nathan's. Those are the two brands that that I like. But but now that I'm eating like Lion and Super Pure, even those give me a stomach ache. You just your body just gets used to better and better food. But like bringing hot dogs, that's easy or you know, bring a steak that you can throw on the barbecue yourself, something that, you know, they haven't pre-seasoned with, with anything. Um, but as far as road trip food, this, when we went on the RV trip, normally on a road trip, you're drinking pop, you're drinking, you're eating chips, you're eating salty food and you are miserable. And I always thought that was from being in a car. It wasn't. My pain was from the horrible food I ate on the road and, you know, getting a, 
getting chocolate and, you know, something terrible at every single gas station. It, it felt like a, like the road owes me this food, but it was just so terrible for our bodies. Um, so what I found was Tillamook meat sticks and they are the cleanest that I can find at Walmart. So Walmart carries the Tillamook meat sticks and they were the cleanest, cleanest, cleanest that I could find. They're expensive, but I ate those on the road and water water and meat sticks. And it was fantastic. I also, I brought some bacon and right here, homemade beef jerky. It's the best. I just, I drive for an Amish guy and when he needs me there all day long, I'll bring this whole thing and I'll just drink water and eat homemade beef jerky because it's, it's, just like eating hamburgers that I make, it's the same meat, but I, I can I can take it with me and it's clean. My hands are still clean afterwards. It's it's wonderful. Um, and the like. So if you're on a trip and you're out in the world, my tip is if you go to the grocery store super early in the morning, they're clearing out their like last day meat. And you scoop that off the shelf. That is what I ate in the RV the whole time. Take your cast iron skillet <laughs> and eat that cheap meat. And traveling doesn't have to be that hard. I did one day decide, okay, fine, I'll eat with you guys. And we were at a Denny's and I ordered scrambled eggs and sausage. And like, I tried to get all meat. I had diarrhea within 30 minutes. I was sick. It was the seed oils and whatever was in the meat. So I just, after that, I'm like, it's just not worth it. I can't trust these places. I just, you, you just eat. I just eat before you go. <laughs> that is all I have. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I can second a lot of that stuff. I make jerky and I've started making those pemmican bars now. I will cook. The last trip we went on was one that I didn't know was going to happen. It was kind of like, oh, we're going somewhere tomorrow overnight. And so I just took like a sheet pan and put all the ground beef that I had in my fridge yet because um, I didn't want it to go bad while we were gone either and just baked that. And it kind of shrinks down into this like giant rectangle. All the fat renders out so you can just let it cool, slice the patties up. And then I put all those in storage containers, like scoop the fat out. And I was like, cool, we're ready. You know, at least for me, that was like two days worth of food. Um, so yeah, I think learning to make some things at home that are more shelf stable, like you're mentioning the jerky and, um, things like that's always good. I mean, I bring a bag of jerky now with me. I've, I've recently cut out ground beef, which is like tears. Cause I love burgers and the ground beef jerky that I was making. So I'm going to try it with brisket next, if I can get it sliced thin enough. But anyway, I always have a bag of jerky with me pretty much wherever I go. Cause it's like, if I get hungry or if I get tempted, you know, to eat something, then it's like, just have a couple bites of this and then the craving goes away. So agreed. All right, Christy. Hey, everybody. I'm Christy. My channel is Meeting Wellness. And um, I'm just a teacher in Southern California. And my channel is all about me and my cat Pixel. <laughs> As you can see, she likes to get involved with me in this. Um, but uh, talking about eating out, um, I'm sort of a mix, a mix between, you know, Ellie and then sometimes, you know, when you have to go out or there's a, fa a family event, um, you know, I don't shy away from it. So um, the main reason why I shy away from it, it mo most of the time, it, it just generally is the expense because it, it's going to be expensive. But then there's times like, oh, I don't know, like one day I had jury duty <laughs> and I had to sit there. I was there all day. Um, and so then I have to sort of know, you know, what I can do. So that day, there was a couple places I considered. So um, I think I did the burger patties that day. But a lot of people have said that. So the other place, um, sometimes I'll even do like Chipotle because you can order just the meat. And then if you do dairy, they also have like sour cream and cheese. Um, so like if we have a work function, sometimes the teachers, you know, go out to lunch because when we're actually teaching, they don't, it's hard to get away, but if we have a meeting, it's kind of a special thing and everybody wants to go eat together. Um, so if I can find something like that, um, then that's what I'll do. The other times where I've had to really plan ahead is um, family functions. I 
or, or special functions. Like uh, I had a couple of weddings, which is super weird because I hadn't been to weddings um, in a long time. But since going carnivore, I've had two weddings. Um, and so I just asked ahead of time. So one of them was like a family wedding. My aunt actually got married. And I just asked ahead of time and she was so nice and provided me all the menu options. And I decided, nope, there's nothing there for me. Um, and so I just stuffed myself like full, 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 full. And um, it was fine. So nobody was asking me, why aren't you eating? I just enjoyed, you know, my whole family was there. Um, and we just focused on, you know, talking and taking lots of pictures and hanging out. And yeah, everybody was fine with the fact that I, that I wasn't eating. So, um, I, it used to make me a little nervous. Like Ellie said, I used to be a little bit, uh, shy of that, but I got over that real, real quick. Um, one time my son, it was his birthday and he's now eating kind of with me. He's a uh, meat based keto, but before, but for his birthday, this was before that, um, we went uh, out to a restaurant and I thought, okay, I'm going to call ahead. And, I didn't want to pay for the steak because I knew it was going to be too small for me and it was going to be expensive. So I thought, oh, I can do like the chicken Alfredo thing, kind of like what Robin was saying. But when I called ahead, yeah, it was all full of seed oils and it was kind of a sauce that they buy mostly already made. So I'm glad I did call ahead. So I just sat there. I had enjoyed my water and then they had some like little pats of like real butter on the table. So yeah, I ate a couple of those. <laughs> Hashtag bite butter. Um, at, but, you know, it, it was fine. And again, uh, sometimes my family's like, did you just eat butter? And I'm like, yes, I did. But th they're used to me doing that now, I think. Um, otherwise, the only other time is like when we go on a vacation, right? So my husband and I will take trips. We have one planned for June. And I mean, he knows, he knows by now. So he just plans to, you know, we go to a steak a lot. Um, or burger patties. That's like my go-to. Um, sometimes chicken wings, if I can find them, you know, you know, like Buffalo Wild Wings where they fry them in tallow, um, then I can do that. I mostly eat beef, but I'll, especially if we're out like on a trip or some special occasion too, I'll throw in uh, more chicken or pork um, if I need to do that. So um, I think Nia, you also mentioned packing for work. So I'll touch on that. I didn't hear anyone else touch on that. So um Teaching is kind of its own special, uh, you know, breed, I guess. We have a very scheduled, regimented time. We get 45 minutes, and it's at this time, and that's when it is, and that's what we got. So I usually will uh, boil up um, 10 to 12 eggs, and just I have a just a bunch of hard-boiled eggs. Um, if I depending on how much dairy I want to do, sometimes I'll bring a little bit of cheese and then I'll bring my homemade bone broth. So nowadays I, when I buy steaks, um, I used to cry like over, Oh no, I paid all this money for these bones that I'm just throwing in the trash. But now I purposely go for the bone and ribeyes. Um, and then I freeze those bones in a bone bag. And when the bag gets full, I pop them into my instant pot and, um, stick them in there for about three hours with some water and some salt and a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and it makes really good bone broth. So I'll bring a jar of that. Um, and then my newest thing is I'll, I'll bring picanha bites. So my left, so Robin talked about steak bites, <laughs> picanha bites, Robin, it's a thing. I invented it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I'll just, I have my leftover slices of picanha. I'll just cut those into bites. Um, they're, they're delicious. They're even good cold. So that's easy. So those are the things I'll do. And it's usually all prepped because I'll make a picanha on the weekend and then I'll have, um, you know, a couple of days worth of picanha bites for lunch. So as long as I plan ahead, um, I always have something uh, I've been known to bring bacon to. Somebody said, do you heat that up? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> crunch, crunch. Um, yeah, they thought I was weird. It's fine. <laughs> it's delicious. And um, I think that's. I think that pretty much covers it for me. Awesome. Yeah, I was um, I was thinking about you in particular with the bringing stuff to lunch because I think I've heard you talk about it before on mm -hmm. one of your videos or live streams or something. And I thought, yeah, that's something I don't even think about really anymore because I'm just home all day. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm always just here and it's convenient. So it's like, oh, what would I pack if I had to? Or how would I do that? Is it good, Bookers? 
it taped? Is it better? Um, awesome. Yeah, I just have a few things to add um, to that. And I think, you know, as far as going out to restaurants, um, I kind of touched on how, you know, there is that that mindset component that we like Ellie mentioned too, where you, you kind of just have to come to terms with whatever you're comfortable with, you know, and just kind of make that decision. Like, Hey, I mean, and I'm seeing comments go by in the chat too, which I'm going to put up on screen as well of, of different approaches kind of to that also. Like, um, we can start there, I guess. Keto simple says, I think understanding how to navigate eating out is a huge skill to acquire. And I agree. I think it's just something that deserves attention and that you can think about and change perhaps as you go along your journey. Like I know in the beginning for me, it was really hard for me to go out to eat and not indulge in something, even if it was like some salad. Cause I used to like salad, you know, and I ate salad for a long time and I don't, you know, I love Caesar salad with Caesar dressing and I would never eat the croutons for years and years anyway, but you know, anchovy and salad dressing, you know, and Parmesan cheese. And so even things like that, you know, those would be tempting to me in the first, in the beginning. And I'm, uh, my partner is a sushi chef. And so he loves food. He loves to eat. He loves to go out and experience, you know, different cuisines and stuff like that. And so that was kind of something we had to figure out too, like as a couple, um, knowing like what I'm comfortable with. And so I think, you know, if you happen to be the only carnivore in your household or not everybody in your family or your friend group, you know, eats like you, it might be worth having that discussion with the people you love who, you know, you trust and are you're close enough with that you would want to, you know, make that effort to do that. Um, just so that maybe you're not always being called like, hey, let's go out to the bar or let's go out to this restaurant or something like that. Um, if that is a temptation or if it's hard for you to deal with, um, especially if you're just starting out. And so that's something like we talked about it's like, hey, I want to go out and enjoy this stuff with you. But some of these places we go, it's really hard for me. Like uh, Mexican food is one thing that's like, yeah. I just can't find anything on the menu that doesn't have seasoning or sauce. I mean, sometimes you can find like fajitas, but usually they're still covered. They're marinated or they're covered in oil. You know, they're cooked in oil, something like that. So that's one thing where I'm like, I just can't really do certain types of restaurants. Um, so we've kind of settled on this Korean barbecue place. That's, I don't know, it takes us like 30 minutes to get there, but we go there almost once a week because Ben loves it. Uh, the little one, she gets rice, which she doesn't get at home. And so like, she'll just eat the, the little bowl of rice and she's a happy camper and they bring out all the meat raw. So I get raw brisket, I get beef tongue and ribeye and it's thin sliced. So I know there's been no oils that have touched it. It's completely unseasoned and I can control what I put on that little grill that's in front of us. And so I can cook it to the temperature I like and it's all you can eat. And so really that's the only place that I enjoy going because it's something that I can easily do. And I know for sure, cause I, like I mentioned, I worked in restaurants for years and years and years. So I've seen many, many kitchens, you guys. And I don't know if anybody's seen the movie Waiting, but if you have, that is uh, in some places or in some organizations, like that's not a far cry from what happens back there sometimes. Like, especially if you irritate your server, you know, you never know what might happen to, I mean, it's not as bad as that movie, but sometimes <laughs> people, pe sometimes people just don't know the answer. So like, say you were to give your server that card that says, I can't have any of these seed oils. Number one, most kitchens, unless you're at some kind of fine dining, French, you know, super fancy steakhouse or something like that, they're not going to have real butter in their kitchen at all. They're not going to have ghee. They're not going to have tallow. They're not going to have like they're not going to have any of that. Any kind of butter stuff is going to be cut with vegetable oil. Like we were talking about, I think backstage olive oils, you can't really trust those at all anymore. So even like oil and vinegar that we, we used to put on people's tables for salad dressings, if they wanted oil and vinegar, was not real olive oil. Right. Um, and so sometimes servers don't know what this stuff is and they don't know. So like I think having a card like that is a great idea because at least it spells out, you know, the things. And so if you can get that to a manager, usually is if you hand that to like, and this is nothing against the individual people, but like if you hand that to your average line cook or server, like they may not know 
what those things are. And they may not know what's in that little jug of oil that they're spraying on the flat top, you know, constantly to cook things with. Obviously, anything that goes in the deep fryer is seed oils, 100 Mm -hmm. percent. And so essentially what they'd have to do to accommodate that is to because if you have like a shellfish shellfish allergy come in, they'll have to you know, take the pan and go run it through the dishwasher to make sure it's clean and sanitized and then clean the area around it and then only cook your order on that pan or that portion of the flat top, which is probably full of other people's stuff because everything is working, you know, in tandem. And so it's, you know, it's a lot to ask depending on where you are and and like the caliber of the place. And so they may, you know, they may to your face say, oh, sure, you know, we'll take care of that. But you, unless you're back there and you watch it, you really don't know 100% if that's what's happening or if somebody just said, you know, what's this ticket? Like, I'm just going to do it like normal and then say it's fine because I've seen that happen before. And so it's, I mean, I think on the flip side of that, nowadays people are more used to hearing about food allergies and there's a lot more, there's a lot more awareness about different things like gluten-free and, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, again, not necessarily blaming the individual people here, but um, it's just, you can't always trust it. Even if they say like, this is real butter, it might not be real butter. And so that's kind of the thing that just from being on the back end of that, I've, I've seen over the years. And so the, the mindset that I kind of take with this is like, well, if I'm going out to eat, I'm just going to kind of accept the fact outside of this Korean barbecue place, because I see the raw meat come out and I know exactly, you know, you can see that it's completely untouched. Um, but I just kind of accept the fact, like, even if I ask, I'm there's no guarantees that I'm still not getting this stuff on my plate or there's not a marinade in this meat that I that nobody kind of really knew about. And so it's just kind of a risk that um, I feel like you take if you go out, unless you, again, are in like, a super fancy place and they make like their own hollandaise sauce or they make, you know, beurre blanc or they make something like that where you know that butter was an ingredient in that or something like that. So that's kind of my, my feeling on it. But yeah, I like to prepare a lot of things at home for traveling. Um, pretty much, you know, a lot of the things that you guys already mentioned. And so that's kind of where I am at with it. I wanted to just say that, that, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I I found that there, like there's this um, Chinese food buffet in my local area. A lot of times the kids will want to go there after church, so they'll convince like my husband or my father-in-law. They'll they'll convince one of the guys that that's where they should go for lunch, and um, so I used to order the hibachi there. I would you know get in the line and I would just get the meat and the eggs, but then they have this block of what they're calling butter that they're seasoning the grill with but the butter is sitting there it's not melting at all and it's right next to a hot grill <laughs> like so um i end up having a reaction to that uh, whatever they were putting on the grill I'm, assu- I'm assuming that it's like margarine or something that's some other kind of seed oil um product but um so I just found that I couldn't, I couldn't even eat there, even though it's just all meat and eggs and stuff that I'm having them prepare for me. Uh, I couldn't even, I just couldn't even eat there. So, um, but I do feel the same way as you, like I, like I said, I eat out once or twice a week, every week. So there are certain places that I know that I can go and I'm not going to have a reaction to the food um, that I'm ordering. But that place in particular, I can't go there at all anymore because I mean, I have to eat before I go or I'll have to fast while I'm there and eat when I get home or something like that because I just, I react to whatever the, that is, that block of butter that they're putting on the grill. Yeah, it's not really butter. <laughs> it's maybe yeah. there's 30% butter in there or something, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, you go, go look at the box and um, it's not. If you're going, if you're going like on a cruise or to a, like you said, to a higher end place where they're going to actually have chefs and, and, you know, they're, they're, they're basically trying to get your, uh, your recommendation at the end of the cruise. Like they're trying to get your, you know, your sign off. So they're, they're more sensitive. 
So if you're going to go on vacation to like an, an all expense paid place where it's kind of more upscale, then you can probably get away with the card and get better results because they don't want you to get sick while you're there for that stay. And you're not only just eating there, you're living there. So um, that that is probably more viable than just going out in town. And uh, so I think you're right on that. But I have had good luck going to, uh, and not use, I didn't have that card, but I went to um, Texas Roadhouse and I knew that they used grill spray and which is just a vegetable oil spray, which everyone uses, right? And I just said, hey, listen, I got an uh, allergy to that spray and any vegetable oil. So just please just use a clean grill and throw butter on there and fry it on. Then they did that for me and that, that, that worked out. But um, if you just tell them in plain English, you know, a lot of uh, people, at least, you, again, I wasn't back there, so I didn't verify that. But um, I talked to someone else that did, and they they had them prepped. Uh, one person asked for it that way, and the other one didn't, and they tasted both of them, and they tasted different. So you can tell it's been fried in butter. So you can do that test too, if you if you both order the same kind of thing like meat, you know. And when one's fried in a vegetable, it'll taste different than one fried in butter. So uh, and the way they season it, and that. so I know that that's a possibility too. But you know you're you're trusting a third party. Even if you go to the drive through I mean, you're trusting some complete stranger. You don't know what their health's like, what their cleanliness is like, what the kitchen's like. You have no idea. It's all behind the wall on purpose because it's not pretty back there. I've worked food service too, and it, it's never pretty back there. It's just a mess. And uh, some are organized messes, some are chaotic messes, but they're all messes. And um, you're just trusting a lot. So it's much safer to eat at home. It's much cheaper. It tastes better. I prefer to eat at home, but well, I get it. You can't always, right? So I get that. So that you do have to have options, but just be aware that you are trusting complete strangers that you don't know, that you would not trust with anything else, but you're trusting with what they're going to put in your mouth. So that's a lot. Not only that, and you're giving them money to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would suggest that um, like my mom and I, my mom is a uh, keto. And for our birthdays, our birthdays are in the same month. And we went to like a local, it's like a family owned restaurant. So like not a chain. And they were super accommodating. Um, now they do have a grill there, like an outdoor grill, but they usually don't have it going for lunchtime. They usually do it at dinner. Um, but for us, they like opened up the grill and they grilled our steaks for us. And uh, we saw them do it because it's outside. So that was pretty cool. Um, I would definitely go there again. They gave us, they gave us like a side of um, butter and then they gave us uh, bacon for our birthday dessert because they're like, okay, we know that you don't want the cake or whatever free dessert. What can we give you? Like we didn't ask. They, they like knew that we were there for our birthdays because we called ahead. Um, but, and then they're like, what can we bring you? And we're like, do you got any bacon back there? <laughs> and so that was, we got birthday bacon. Um, so places like that, I feel um, I don't know, could be a better option, you know, than, than a chain. Um, they're yeah. more invested, right. In the quality of what they put out there. And it's just, you know, that, that restaurant, you know, supports their family. So I would definitely go back, um, because we had a great experience there. Maybe look for a place like that where you guys live. That's a cool, or go ahead, Ellie. I was just going to say, um, it just popped into my head and it's kind of expensive, but you could always go for sashimi, especially if you, if you enjoy seafood and sushi, that was something that I really enjoyed in my previous dietary, um, life. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. You know, what I was thinking was when we were talking about buffets and there's something that I think we probably have all experienced. Like when you go to a buffet, you tend to eat more, right? You start you start packing it on and um, or you have like, oh, I'm so stuffed. But then someone brings out dessert and then you're like, oh, well, I can have dessert. I feel like it's so great that on carnivore, we don't really have that anymore because like the food we eat, like I, I've I've learned since being on carnivore that we eat till we reach our protein goal. So and, you know, obviously the fat is satisfying as well. But I think a lot of times, like when people um, would go to buffets, they're filling up on all these carbs and desserts and all that stuff. And so they can just continue to eat and eat and eat. And I think it's so great that I think I can speak for all of us that we are able to just be so satisfied with the food so that like, I don't know, even if we get like a small, we pay the price and we get the smaller portion, it's kind of like, 
yeah, this is going to hold me over versus somebody who is still consuming the standard American diet. They're probably going to be like, that's all you're eating. And it's just like, I don't know. I just want to throw that out there and see what you guys thought about that. Anyone? I don't want, I hate being the interrupter. I'm like, ah. um, <laughs> well, I want to comment on the, the okay, sashimi part. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, so was I, so you go I first. <laughs> love sushi. Oh Me my too. gosh. I love the California roll, the spicy California roll, all the different special rolls. Oh my gosh. I just love those things. But of course we can't have that on carnivore. So um, there is a local, um, Japanese place that I go to with my husband sometimes. And I decided, you know, we were there, I was going to try the sashimi. Now I, I really never ate sashimi before carnivore. I always ate the rolls, <laughs> even the hand rolls, but sashimi is so good. If you like fish, you definitely should try it. it it's absolutely, it, it was so surprising to me, the different tastes that uh, the sashimi had all the different types of fish and how different they tasted and the textures. And uh, I absolutely love it. It's super good. So just wanted to comment on that. I yeah. agree. I, uh, I find uh, if I go to eat sushi though, I eat before I eat beef beforehand. Cause like I could just sit there and tear through like, you know, 50 pieces of sashimi easy you know i love mackerel um hamachi you know toro fatty tuna is so good ikra i always eat the, the eggs and the salmon and you know everything so like i could spend 200 bucks easy you know just on sushi so just getting the raw you know the no rice um so i will always eat before and then go there and be like, okay, I can have one sashimi platter and be fine. It's like dessert. Basically. Dessert. It's your treat. Yeah, it's dessert. I miss. I gotta be honest. Uh, I miss eating sushi and I I miss wasabi and and um, me too. And my stock. And my I miss all that stuff. I mean the uh, uh, teriyaki or not the teriyaki. What's the uh, wasabi and um, like a soy uh, sauce? The soy sauce, yeah. I do soy I miss sauce, that. Yeah. I, I miss and you know that's so you're gonna miss some stuff, but what I don't miss is being ill and being <laughs> fat and being, you know, having a hard time tying my shoes and that kind of stuff. I, I it's not worth it. I mean, but I do I gotta say there's certain things I miss, and that's one sushi. My son and I used to go eat sushi at this <clears throat> restaurant called Wasabi's, it was our favorite place here, and I haven't been since because uh I just I like sashimi too, but I like it with the, you know, the all the condiments. Fixes. Yeah, the condiments. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's the way it is. So I just stay away, and it's easy enough, you know. Yeah, my husband and I, we used to. Uh, I used to live in a like a house. So I used to rent it with a bunch of friends, and then they'd have like D and D games, and we would make sushi for i mean really simple nice. rolls like california rolls we would make the sushi for everyone because we noticed how we were trying to get people to be a little bit more healthy because they were just constantly eating out or getting fast food or pizza or chinese food and so we're like oh well what if everyone pulls money in together and we would make maki rolls and stuff like that and they're a bunch of nerds so they're just like of course they are. and they would eat it and it would be <laughs> it would just be like a little bit of a cringe pass but it would be fun I, I host <laughs> I host D and D games now, and my son plays, oh, and cool. his friends, and I'm like the dungeon master, right? So, and yeah. I make I make pot roast for all of them, and now they love it. They're like, "Oh, we having pot roast?" I'm like, "Yeah, we're having pot roast." In fact, we yeah. might play tomorrow night. So we have game night every now and then, and sometimes it's board games, sometimes it's D and D, but we just you know we have fun, and that, but I make sure they eat meat and um, no chips, no dips, none of that around my table. Mm -hmm. Not I'm the master of that table. Yes, yeah, so I was gonna say you're the dungeon master. You get to pick. <laughs> That's awesome. I could see you being such a good DM. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so fun. I'm derailing the conversation. I'm gonna mute. Sorry. Yeah, we're we're derailing, but well, we've got a couple questions slash comments that I, I thought we'd pop up here and see if we can get some comments on. Um and thanks for everybody who is chatting it up here tonight. We've got some great um great tips, great ideas. Um the first one was from you know, right around when we first started. So I hope you're still here, um, UConn. But um, you say, I'm not American. Traveling next week to Washington, D.C. as a tourist. I don't know the restaurants there looking for tips. I'm doing 80-20 carnivore, carnivore, mostly worried about not finding enough fats. 
So I'm not personally familiar with the DC area in general. Are any of you guys or ladies? Buy some butter. Yeah. Buy I've a been block there. of butter at the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then, you know, um, hopefully you can get a, I don't know, your hotel's probably already scheduled and everything, but hopefully you have a kitchenette. If you don't, then, like I said, I, I did answer this in the chat and I think ground beef patties, wherever you go, you're going to find that everywhere. So I, if you're coming from, uh, you're not American. So I would say Wendy's is always safe. Um, McDonald's is actually safe and in and out if they have that there. And then of course, bacon and eggs for breakfast, as long as you ask that they're cooking in butter, cause they don't, they will automatically cook in oil unless you ask for butter for like an omelet or something. So just ask. And that, that's pretty simple that they can cook in bacon grease or, or butter, but that's your go-to is eggs and, and ground beef, in my opinion. And be careful on those omelets because some places do add pancake batter to their eggs. Right. Um, to make them fluffier. Yeah. <laughs> so sneaky. I know. So yeah. I just usually go with over easy or scrambled or whatever. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, we Christy. used to say yeah. uh, when you're ordering, make just say I would like to use shell eggs. That way they're not using the carton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that that's that happens too. Mm. That's a good call. That's true. Yeah. Um, I'm also doing 80, 20, which is, I mean, if you're not tracking this, it's actually, it's a lot of fat, you mm -hmm. know, and it is kind of something that if you're used to it, you, you know, depending on how long you've been doing this, you probably know what, a, what a average plate for you looks like with like how much fat you would typically add to a meal. And so I think like, this, this isn't something I've done, but I've thought about like, and I don't do butter right now because I'm on the lion diet, but um, I've thought about like just smuggling in like a little dish of butter in my bag or something, or even like some tallow and like, you know, and, and then asking like if, if they don't have real butter and they don't have tallow or they don't have an appropriate fat source, you know, I would just order a steak and then pull out my butter and just use it, you know? And I mean, what are they going to do? Say, it's like I'm allergic to all the other things. So, I mean, like it kind of just depends on again, where you're, where you're going. But I, I would imagine that there, there's going to be quite a variety of, of places. Um, so you could again, kind of choose even like Christy said, what, like a more home style type of place, they may be much more accommodating, like than some yeah. bu super busy chain. That's like, we ain't got time, you know, to clean the pans and all this stuff mm -hmm. for you. So it just, there's so many things that it depends on, but yeah, I would definitely keep, keep fat stocked on my person if I was going around and it was, you know, it's essential that, um, you get that much fat. Cause that's the same boat I'm in. Like if I drop my fat below, like even 75%, I stop sleeping well. So like yeah. I am, it's like critical for me to keep that fat high. So I'm, I feel you. Good luck to so you. There, there's, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, so no, you kind of also said that they're driving there. So if, if you're driving, I would bring like a George Foreman grill or something that you could just buy a steak on and throw it in or bring a, like an instant pot, something where you can cook your own food and make sure that you have something that you can eat. You can also uh, supplement your meals with uh, powdered butter. I know it sounds weird, but in the army, uh, I've worked with soldiers that are carnivore that are trying to, and they have to add fat to their meals because the MREs are low fat, the meals ready to eat, which are the packets of meals. So you can open up your meal, even though it's not great, and it pour a bunch of powdered butter in there and eat it. So you can bring in a Tupperware thing, like, or something, you know, the powdered butter and sprinkling on whatever you have. And that'll add a lot of fat too. And then it's shelf stable, right? And that's what you're seeking when you're out running around. Maybe you're seeing the museums in DC or whatever. You can bring a little container. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I have also uh, done this where I will, instead of bringing it in with you, I will bring it in the car. And like, if I'm going in someplace, like even that Korean barbecue place where, Sometimes the, I get really fatty pieces and sometimes I get really lean pieces. And so I will eat yeah. sometimes like a couple tablespoons of tallow or something like before I go into a place. So it's like I know I have kind of like that base of fat already going. And then if, if you do just like have to order a regular steak or a burger patty or something like that, you know, like at least you got something in. So, um, yeah, hopefully that helps. I know some of you were engaging with this question too in the in the chat but i thought um 
we would bring this one up here too. Um, Isabel says, three months carnivore, 71 years old, mainly two meals per day, losing a ton of hair and feeling very tired and no energy. Hey, Who has a comment? I have a couple, yeah, but I've been jabbing. Increase, so. Increasing the fat. I, I think you said this in the chat, Increase increasing the fat for sure. One of the things that I did, um, I lost a lot of hair on keto. I think I lost like half of my hair uh, when I was on keto. And um, I started using collagen. Um, so, I mean, if you're, if you're drinking a lot of bone broth or doing a lot of, you know, things that contain a lot of collagen, which I wasn't when I was on keto, I was on really a plant-based keto, not even a high fat meat-based keto. Um, and so collagen really did help a lot. And I've been using it for many years now and I got all my hair back. <laughs> so my hair is pretty thick now, but uh, back then I thought, wow, I'm going to probably go bald because I lost so much hair. Um, but yeah, so I, I use collagen for that. Yeah, I definitely electrolytes too for the tiredness. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was going to say I had the same experience losing the hair when I went keto and then carnivore. It fell out pretty steadily. I'd say I probably lost half my hair too. But now I think that was just a diet change. Like um, this isn't to, you know, related to your loss of energy, but as far as the hair loss, you know, anytime you change your diet in, in a very, you know, you go into a very different eating pattern than what your body's been used to. Um, you can lose hair. I think it's called like telogen effluvium or something like that. It has a name for it. Um, and I did what Robin did. I supplemented collagen. Now I make my own bone broth, which is all full of collagen. And yeah, now I have all these, I mean, they're annoying now, but I'm grateful for them, but all these little baby hairs and my hair is, is filling back in. So if you look at my hairline, it's like, you know, it's all filling back in now. Um, for the energy, I already mentioned this in the chat, but I think adding fat, because once you're fat adapted, that's where you get your energy from. My mom is also 71, and I know she will sometimes just not eat enough calories. Um, and I'm like, you need to eat more than that, mom. <laughs> yeah. She just has a hard time getting it in. And all those years of eat less, move more, right? It's like yeah. ingrained in our brains, you know. Um, she's like, but if I eat more than 1200 calories, I gain weight. And I'm like, then you need to reverse diet. You need to eat more. <laughs> so I'm always telling her that. Um, so that, that would be my advice as well as the electrolytes. If you feel like you need to supplement with those, I, I will get low energy or a little tired. Um, if I'm low on electrolytes or, or fat, either of those things. I would also add to that iodine. Uh, most people are iodine, iodine deficient and you can get a lot of the same um, same kind of, uh, behavior in your body for, for not having, uh, iodine. So that's something else you can add. It's very inexpensive and easy to do, and it won't hurt you, uh, you know, a couple drops a day. Great. Yeah. That, that echoes most of what I would say. And I mean, I, I struggle with energy on and off. I mean, I still do to this day sometimes. And I think I have kind of two points on this and, because, you know, I think I have quite a bit of healing still to go and it's just taking time, you know, and so I just have to accept some days that like, you know, I'm just not going to feel great every single day. Um, I'm having longer and longer stretches of time where I do feel great and I have great energy and my skin isn't itchy and I'm, you know, I have a good mood and stuff, but then I'll get these just like flare ups where I'm just tired, you know, and my psoriasis gets itchy you know it's like it just something is just clearing out and it's just taking time and so three months um i know sometimes um that feels like a long time i'm on i just closed out month eight and i'm now over two weeks again on the lion diet so just red meat salt and water nothing else and i'm starting to feel like and I've upped my elect electrolytes. And like I mentioned in the comments, I'm getting like a minimum of 150 grams of fat every day. I really, really always try to do that. And that fixed my sleep. I was waking up at 2 a.m. I'm about to publish this video. Um, I almost got it done today. And then real somehow my audio and video got out of sync and I cannot fix it. I've tried like four different things. So I might just have to refilm it or publish it that way, which I don't think I can do. But that's an important video that I... I um, will ask you to look out for because I'm going to go into great detail about all of 
you know, this type of stuff, like everything I've tried, everything I've tracked, everything I've measured to get my sleep in line. And with that, my energy has improved a lot. But it, but spoiler alert, it's high, high fat, 80, 20 and um, more electrolytes. Because once I switched to Lion again, I felt like my electrolytes were off and I needed like now I'm drinking two. the last few days. I've had two servings of like what would be in an element packet and I'm feeling better. And that also helps with my digestion. So there, the, you know, there's a lot of things to tweak and then just sometimes giving it more time, um, trusting your body, trusting the process and just giving it grace and, and letting the healing take place, um, I think is important too. So I feel, I feel for you. I know it's, it's scary when you feel like, ah, things aren't working. Yeah. I just watched, I just watched Larry's show about seed oils and the oh. half life of seed oils. And yeah, I mean, so you're, we're eating bad for 50 years and then we change how we're eating and we have all these products in our bodies that either never go away or are going to take another decade to go away. And then we're losing weight and we've spent, We've got oxalates and lectins and like, we've got so much stuff. Every minute that we lose another pound, we're just being flooded by this stuff. Of course we're tired. We're exhausted. Our bodies are just like treading water, but we're doing the best thing we can, which is eating this nourishing food. What, there's nothing else to do. I mean, we start there. That's the right. building block. And then we start all these other things too, but we're doing what we can. And she's only been doing it a couple of months. You're going to, it's going to take years to really get through all this stuff. So we're all on the path. <laughs> exactly. And some will, and, and you can't compare yourself to other people either. So that's, that's another error to make. And also, you know, looking at the scale, there's a lot of error, a lot of things you got to, watch out and we call it the minefield oh, i'll call it the minefield of carnivore because um they, they'll get you i mean one of them is comparing yourself to someone else well they've been on it two months and they're getting better results than me well that's you don't know anything about that person and what their body's like their metabolism their history i didn't eat a bunch of spinach i don't have oxalate dumping nia loved spinach so she ate a ton or whatever she ate i don't know it had oxalates in it or dark chocolate or whatever i didn't eat that either i mean i wasn't that guy i was a sugar guy so you, to compare me to someone else that's got oxalates is completely different. I mean, so don't compare yourself to anyone else. This is N equals one. This is you. And all you're trying to do is improve yourself. And you can only compare yourself to what you were yesterday and what you were last week and last month. And that's what you track. So, and if it's not working out, then you can tweak it. And that's part of the experiment. So it's, it's honing your skill as a carnivore. That's what we're doing here. Agreed. We have surpassed the one hour mark. <laughs> yeah. So we've got, I've got one more um, comment that I thought we could address if, if y'all have time, but if anyone needs to leave, now's your chance. Time flies. I probably do need to bow out. My brother's driving through town. I gotta go see him. Okay. All right, Cammie, bye. bye. Thanks, Cammie. Okay, well, if you all are here for one more. Um, Ricardo says, I'm on day three and I've only been using ghee as my added fat source. Is that enough? I think this kind of follows along the lines a little bit of what we've been talking about. But, um, you know, just off the top of my head, I would say, you know, Again, day three, um, it might be right now. Um, you're going to, you know, it's going to be at least 30 days before you kind of get a feel for how you go through this transition. I try, I know I tried to add too much fat too soon and that gave me some problems. I knew I needed more fat, but like I couldn't digest it well enough. I was still having, you know, just figuring out my electrolytes, figuring out all these other things. And so I tried to change too many things at once. And then I was just like super confused. Um, so I think you know, perhaps working with one metric at a time is what I would recommend. And then if you're feeling fine and your energy is good, then that might be uh, enough for you. But uh, what do you all think? Well, I was just going to add to that, that um, if you're feeling fine and your energy is good, then you're good. <laughs> but if you don't, if you're having a problem, I know when I first started, I did track 
because I had no idea um, what so much protein looked like on my plate or so much fat looked like on my plate. Um, so it may help to use one of the free apps. Like um, I like carb manager. I don't track all the time. I know Nia has been tracking recently because you've tweaked some things, right, Nia? So when you were going to like 80, 20, like you didn't know what that looked like. Um, I didn't either. Um, and so just to know that you're getting in enough protein that your, you know, fat to protein ratio is where you want it to be. It'll show you all of that when you put in what you're eating. So you can see, because I know I thought that, uh, I was eating plenty of fat and I put it in and I was like, Hmm, I could probably add another couple tablespoons of butter. Um, or in your case, ghee, um, because it was surprisingly, you know, lower than, than I thought it was. And like Nia, I feel better when my fat is a little bit higher. So if you start feeling badly and you, you know, firstly, cause you're on day three, so you're, there may be some transition symptoms yeah. coming your way. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> right. Probably will be. <laughs> yeah, you're in the storm. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have yes. to get through it. Yes. You're going to have to get through it. But yeah. after that and you're fat adapted, um, you know, I might suggest just doing that, you know, if you feel like you need to tweak some things. So I just have to say, Ricardo, your hairdo in your picture is absolutely fabulous. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice photo. Um, and I agree with what everybody's been saying. And that is you're really, really early on, um, you know, just focus on eating the meat, <laughs> focus on eating meat. Um, and then, you know, get through that first 30 days. I think once you get through that, you know, you'll kind of settle where you're going to be at. Um, and then you can start to t try to tweak things. But I think in the first, I'd say for the first 30 days, you just focus on it on only eating meat because during that time, you got to get rid of your carb cravings. If you're, if you work, you know, a carbohydrate eater, um, dealing with all of that mentally it's enough to just focus on on eating meat in my opinion yep <clears throat> you're gonna go through the storm and uh be prepared for a couple weeks of you know what some people would call hell uh could be uh it's not gonna be fun but on the other end is smooth sailing and amazing healing and amazing results uh it's a new life so Kind of like when you go to the military, you go to boot camp or whatever, and you come out and you're a different person. This is a life changing event. You become a different person uh, when you come out. And if you if you stay the course, make sure you focus on your why, why you're doing this, and you know make sure it's a big enough why to get you through those tough times, and and find a community to plug into and watch YouTube videos daily, even though they're all saying the same thing. It doesn't matter. You need reinforcement. You need you need help. To get through this i did i mean i watched them i don't know about you guys i watched up daily i devoured youtube uh when i was going through especially my first month trying to figure out how this thing works and uh just trust the process uh keep it simple like she said just go ahead like carnival grandma said just eat meat uh eat fatty meat salt and yes. drink water repeat and rinse rinse and repeat and then do it until you're satiated and trust your body will take care of it and it will you'll be there you'll be on the other end I believe a lot in visualization. Um, think about, and when you wake up in the morning or maybe right before you go to bed, envision how your day is going to go. So you had mentioned in the comments that you are fighting carb cravings. And like everyone's saying, you just have to mm -hmm. take it one meal at a time, one thing at a time. Don't let social pressures break you down. Remember, the, the health conditions that you're going to be healing. Remember the changes that you're going to be setting when you, with your social circle as well, because they're going to see you glow. They're going to see you stronger and it's going to start to like break this little like bubble that we're all in that we think that, you know, eating a varied diet is, uh, you know, is healthy. And so you're going to be breaking down a lot of barriers in your life. And so I just want to encourage you and say that I'm proud of you that you're started and that you're, you're doing it. And, um, just, just keep on going because just like we all said, trust me, it's going to get better. And if something is not, then you have the opportunity because you know, the protocol to, to use to your advantage. And I think that's something that we all have lacked for most of our lives, exactly knowing yeah. what we need to do 
to fix things because having an answer to a problem, you're going to be a lot less anxious or nervous or, you know, craving that pizza because you know what's going to be on the other side. So I'm proud of you. Good job. <laughs> Ditto. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a journey for sure. And that's, I think, uh, one of the biggest things that changed my view on all this too is is having community and being um, able to you know do things like this or be in other live streams or just even consume content about this you it makes you feel less alone and yeah. like people understand some of what you're going through and so um, yeah stay connected and and stay the course and you know if you if you slip up just get right back on I know that's that's something that's happened to me in the past too, where I would let these kind of like Ellie was saying, I'd, I'd let this or not what you were saying, but with the whole like visualization thing, like I would have a slip up and then I'd be like, Oh, you're terrible. You can't stick to this diet and just like start beating myself up. And then it would just turn into this downward spiral, you know, or I would just end up bing binging on crap, you know? And then it's like, then you really have to start over. So, um, you know, if you do, eat something off plan or just get right back on the next meal and, and keep going because this is, it's the long game we're playing here. So. Yep. And I've got a starter series of videos the, of getting started the first 30, 60, 90 days. What happens if you fall off? All that stuff's in that series. So if you're trying to start and you have questions, it's a good place to jump in and at least look. And then also check out all these guys' videos too. You know, everyone's got good videos that they're experience and you may not connect or relate to what I did exactly, but you might with some of these other people like uh, Ellie, she has some great stories. So definitely uh, check everyone else's out as well. Yeah, great time to do a little plug for um, for that here at the end. Um, I will uh, link everybody's channel handles in the description here after we sign mm -hmm. off. Um, so you can all go subscribe to these, um, Various awesome people, and unless anybody has a final comment um, for today, we'll we'll probably wrap it up here. Thanks for hosting, Nia. Yes, thanks, Nia. This it was has been uh, really, really it was good. always fun. This this group's always fun. Yeah, awesome. Thank you all for being here, and we will have another poll going up on my channel soon. So um, make sure to cast your vote. Um, so that you can, we can see the, all that information uh, and that kind of guides our conversations every Thursday. So uh, that'll be coming up soon and we'll have another episode next Thursday with a great guest panel. So thanks everybody. All Bye, right. You Thank all. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.